For this, we are going to learn how to mat with acetate. Uh, this is for any drawings that are charcoal or chalk pastel or oil pastel, basically anything that can get all over someone else's project and or we don't want someone touching your project so that way it messes it up and we don't want that. So we're going to work with charcoal. The first thing we need to do, make sure our mat is correct size. It is. Um, I'm going to turn this over. We need to get the acetate on the mat before we even work with the art piece. So, big thing. Notice how I have a white piece of paper down. You're going to need to have some type of white piece of paper because if I take this mat and lay it directly on the table, charcoal, anything that's on the table could get on the front of your mat and ruin it. So we want to make sure we have a clean surface to work on. Uh, the front and back of this, the back of this is basically uh, the You'll see the markings, the pencil markings on the corner. That is the back. The front, for the most part, is usually white or off-white for mostly uh, for most of the mats. You'll see that there's a bevel that also indicates that that is the front of the mat. So we're going to place this upside down. I'm going to take the clear acetate. Now, acetate, it is very staticky. So. One of the things is we want to make sure that the table is clear of any eraser uh, trash, as I like to call it. The little stuff that comes off an eraser as you're erasing, that stuff will get all over this clear acetate as much as possible. We want to conserve as much of this uh, clear acetate as possible. With this, I'm going just bigger than probably half an inch to an inch on each side of my opening. And I am going to lay it down, and I am going to cut it. And this stuff tears very easily. I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to go all the way down. I'm not even going to worry about... If I were to stop right here and cut this much off, this little part here is tempted to tear. So I'm just going to cut all the way. And we're going to save this scrap for other people later. Um, I'm going to take this, take it out. Uh, make sure wherever you're laying this down, there isn't a ton of dirt or charcoal or eraser shavings. I'm going to flip this over so the curved part is down. It makes it a lot easier. Once I have that, I'm going to cut the other part off. Again, about anywhere from a half an inch to an inch longer than the opening on each side. So now I have my RP. So notice that there is a little eraser part right there already sticking to that. All right, I'm going to take this, this little extra part, I'm going to roll up and put into the inside of that. So that's going to stay in the inside of that. We are going to keep this over top. With this, we're going to tape this down. With this, we're going to use clear scotch tape for this. I'm going to take two pieces of scotch tape. When we tape this down, we want this to be tight, but not too tight. If it's too tight, it's going to warp. So I'm going to take my tape on each corner, lay it down, and I'm going to pull taut, not super tight, but enough to just get it uh, tight when I lay it down. I'm going to lay those two down. I'm going to take another two pieces of tape. I'm going to put on the corners here, pull, and lay it down. Again, not too tight, but to make sure that this is pulled where it's not loose. I'm going to again do the two, the sides, pull a little tight, lay it down. Same thing with the other two sides. Make sure you don't get the tape to where you can see the tape through the opening. Pull it tight and lay it down. All right, we're not fully done with this yet. We absolutely want to take the scotch tape and tape all the way around this. No air or no holes, no air bubbles. So I'm going to pull as long as I can. This might not get me all the way around. Lay that down. Again, you're not, with this, you're not pulling super tight when you're laying this down. If you do, it's going to warp the actual mat. And we don't want any holes with this. Looks good to me. 
Okay, so I've taped all the way around with clear scotch tape. Next step, we want to uh, get our artwork ready, so I'm going to set this to the side. With this art piece, I have the cover. I want to cut the cover off. Some people like to peel the tape. When you peel the tape, it has a tendency to rip your actual art piece. So we're just going to cut that tape, leave the tape on the back of the art piece. Uh, this cover, it has charcoal all over it. We don't want to flip this over onto the white piece of paper. It'll spread, it'll get over your mat, as well as any other art piece that is laid down. So get rid of that, take that off to the side. I want to cut this down so I don't have extra. I'm going to leave about, oh, half an inch to an inch on each side of this. Alright, so I have my art piece. I'm going to put two pieces of tape on the top of that art piece, underneath, so the sticky part is actually pointing up. Notice I got a little charcoal on my finger. I need to make sure I get that off right now, so that way when I touch the mat or anything else, it doesn't get all over it. So I have my two pieces of tape that are with the sticky part up. I'm going to take this. Again, make sure that when you tape this, you had the uh, pencil markings. You did this on the back and not on the front. We don't want to tape on the front. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this over top. I'm not going to put it down fully right away. I'm going to check. Is there any stuff on the inside? Right now I see a few little things on the inside. I'm going to pull those off. And also on the art piece, I am then going to lay this down over top. I'm going to press. I'm going to check to see, notice how there's a little specks, that's on the inside, I want to pull that off, it's a little staticky, make sure there's, if there's anything, if they're on the outside, it's not too bad, but that looks good to me, I'm going to press down, flip this over again, we're going to let this hang, we do not want to tape this all the way around. We want to allow this art piece to just hang there, be loose. Uh, the reason we want it to be loose is if there's moisture or temperature changes, it's allowed to move. That paper wants to move. If we tape it down, it's going to wrinkle inside that mat. So, we'll allow it to hang loose just like that. We're then going to put a backing on it. There's slick paper or cardstock that you guys can use. I want to cut this down, and here's a big thing. It's got to be bigger than your art piece, smaller than your mat, but we want to try and be bigger than the tape that you use for your acetate. The reason for that, if we ever have to take the backing off, and I start taking the backing off and it's taped to the tape that was on the mass, or acetate, it's going to try and peel that and it might pull and rip your acetate. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. You guys can measure it if you want to, so I'm going to get just a little wider. We want to make sure we have enough mat to tape it down onto. If we go exactly the size of mat, it's going to be really hard to tape it down to the mat. Such as that. I'm pretty much over. There's a little tape sticking out, but I'm okay with that. I'm not taping directly down to the tape. Now, I actually did the wrong thing here. If we have masking tape, I want you guys to use masking tape. Uh, near the end of the year, we start to run out of masking tape, we can just use the scotch tape. But masking tape is what we're going to use. We're going to tape all the way around this. When we do this, don't pull super tight. Just lay it down. Right. Just allow it to lay down loosely. If we pull it tight, that mat is going to want to warp over time because of the tension of the tape. So I'm just going to lay this tape down. Put it down onto the mat. We're going to make sure that we're not pulling tight. Uh, notice how I'm going all the way to the edges. There is no space there. We're going to keep that. So it's all the way around this art piece. It's not just small little pieces. Also make sure when you tear, you don't have any extra that's going over the edge like this. Okay. So now I'm just going to make sure my tape, masking tape is all the way down. Everything is clear in here. We are good to go. The last part that you're going to do 
you are going to put a name tag on this art piece. With this name tag, we have the name tag. We're going to put it on the back. We never want to put it on the actual front of the art piece. We're going to take this, on the back side of this, we're going to do two little, and I already have them on this name tag, two little rolls of tape. You put it on the back there, then we can put it on the bottom right corner of that. It doesn't, usually it doesn't matter which corner. Every time you enter a new contest with this art piece, you're going to create a new name tag. This name tag doesn't go to every single contest. You'll notice this is the advanced art competition, but you'll need to do that for every new contest. Just put a, a new name tag on, make sure it's on the back. Leave the old name tags on, so that way you can see which contest it has been in. Uh, now you have completed a matting with acetate on it.